Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here. Today, we're very lucky to be joined by Nat Eliasson. Uh, welcome Nat, how are you? I'm doing great, excited to be here. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, yeah. We're gonna be talking a little bit about Rome, um, Rome research, and um, for those who don't know about Nat, he is uh, the creator and uh, founder of uh, Growth Machine. Um, it's an a marketing agency. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that before we begin. Yeah, so Growth Machine is an SEO and content marketing agency. So we primarily work with uh, e-commerce and consumer SaaS companies to take over a lot of their blog and content production and help get them ranked for everything their customers are searching. So that especially if they're spending a lot of time and money on ads, this is kind of like a really nice secondary marketing channel to create more brand awareness, to bring in customers organically. And we're basically full service. So we you know, are doing all the research on topics to go after. We're writing the content, publishing it, building backlinks to it. Uh, and you know that's sort of like my day job. And then uh, when I've got some free time in the evenings, I like to be a, a, an unofficial advocate for Rome research. So you've built what is probably the only Rome course right now, isn't it? There's a couple of others. Um, Effortless Output's definitely the biggest and probably the best known. Um, yeah. And sort of, and it was certainly, I think, the first full course on using Rome and the first paid course. Uh, I know there's a couple others out there now, but yeah, launched version one of it back in January uh, yeah. of 2020 before Rome was like really big, but as it was growing, and then version one kind of ran from January till July, and then just relaunching it. Version two now is part of Tiago Forte's Forte Academy alongside. Building a Second Brain and David Perel's course, Rite of Passage. Fantastic. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're nice courses to be alongside, definitely. One is running all the time, so you can oh, sign yeah, up for that you. whenever. But then our live session deadline is September 8th, Tuesday, and then we'll be starting the live sessions. We'll probably do a future live session cohort again, but it might not be until like spring 2021, something like that. Sure. Well, my first question for you, Nat, is more about like how you discovered uh, Rome because you were, am I right in saying you were an Evernote user before that? Yeah, Evernote and Notion, but kind of a, a dissatisfied, like begrudging Evernote user. I had gone <laughs> through Tiago's Building a Second Brain course, which strongly recommend as well, and really, really loved his methodology and the way he thought about personal knowledge management. Uh, mm -hmm. But I really didn't like Evernote. It really felt like a, you know, the best worst tool for the job and was, you know, sort of perpetually dissatisfied with it. So I've been trying a lot of other stuff. Notion also felt like way too heavy and mm. felt like it was getting in the way as well. And then uh, my friend Adam Kiesling tweeted about Rome. I'm not sure how he found it, but this mm. was back in October, November. <clears throat> and he was like, wow, I just found this tool. It's really cool. And I think back then Rome had you know, a few thousand users <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, didn't have payments or anything. It was still super yeah. nascent, uh, even though it's less than a year ago, which is crazy. And mm. so he got me, you know, he just shared it and I found it and I got super excited about it because it was very clear that it was solving all the problems I had with Evernote. It was yeah. a way lighter weight, uh, less obtrusive way to like manage knowledge and interlink it way better without yeah. being stuck in the traditional uh, hierarchical silos of like a filing cabinet or you know folders on your desktop and so that just got me super excited i dived into it i spent the entire like christmas new year holiday just organizing stuff in rome and learning how to play with it and moving things over from evernote and then i started tweeting about it a lot and sharing a lot about it wrote an article about rome that like hit the top of hacker news and started getting more people excited and that was kind of what inspired me to go on and actually make the course and double down and helping more people discover the tool Fantastic. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, early early days uh, opinions on it that help you sort of settle. And 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 am I right in saying uh, you use it for a lot of the stuff you do with your agency, or like how how wide does it go? Does it cover every aspect of life? Yeah, I use it for everything that I do. So I'm yeah. using it for all of the projects that I'm working on, whether that's mm -hmm. like personal life, side projects, growth machine stuff it's not great for multiplayer, right? It's not good for managing team tasks. And so yeah. in the company, we use Asana, right? So okay. we're using Asana to manage all of our work together. But yeah. for stuff that just I'm managing or that I'm working on, I do it all in Realm. And I'd say that like the task management is the least intuitive part of Realm that I think people have the hardest time uh, adopting. But I really like it because I like having my task management and my knowledge management all interlinked and all in one place. I think that's really powerful. 
Definitely. And um, you're, you, you're all right with uh, sharing and showing around your yeah. home, aren't you? Yeah, yeah well, you can dive in and guide us through because uh, I think uh, a lot of people would like to see how it works. Cool. You. Uh, you just need to share or let me share screen. Oh, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we are. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so this is an article that I've been writing in Rome. And I, I, this is actually like, so the, the Rome course focuses on completing a capstone project. So mm. picking a topic you want to research and then doing a bunch of research, organizing your notes on it, and then turning those notes into an article. And so this was my like final output from the capstone is this, this article draft that I'm publishing on my site probably later okay. today. Um, and you know, it's in this capstone EE stands for effortless output project. And you can kind of see how I've laid out the whole project here in Rome. And this is how I do some of my, my task management, but okay. I've got this due date, you know, which was yesterday, the completed date, it's actually going to be today. So mark that projects. Uh, what this is really cool for is uh, I use this status tag to help organize things that I'm working on and seeing, you know, uh, like what is actively being done. And mm -hmm. I kind of go back and forth on this. It's sort of an open question for me whether I want to do it in tags or uh, in this status line. Because if we go to projects, you yeah. can see like there's uh, a bunch of active projects. You know, some of these are articles. Some of these are like improving my like digital security. Uh, there's some growth machine stuff up here. And then I've got a bunch of like these like craftsman things for stuff around the house. And then tons of like someday maybe projects that I could pick up in the future, cool. right? Like huh, 2020 taxes. It's a, it's a maybe project. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, and so this is just something that I really, really like doing is managing tasks. So this is a good example of, you know, working through improving my digital security and here's kind of everywhere that I need to clean it up and all these things that I still need to do to like yeah. improve it. And so I can kind of manage all my tasks here. And task management in Rome can be kind of like finicky because it's really easy to lose tasks. So when I'm on my daily note, I actually have these queries that pull in uh, top priority tasks and overdue tasks. So this okay. is actually a long query that says, uh, show me all to-dos that are not queries and are not on my daily note template and are not top priorities that are due between today and last month. So anything due today or that's been overdue from the last month that I need to go deal with. And that just pulls all of these in, which is super helpful because then I know all the tasks that need to get done as long as they have due dates attached to them. And if I had a task like this and I said, okay, this would be a top priority for today, I can tag it with that. And now it's going to disappear from down here and it's going to be up here. And this tells me oh, okay. like, when I open this up each day, this is what I want to focus on. Like these are the things mm -hmm. that I must get done. And then I can, you know, work through some of these other backlog tasks. Uh, I also like having this, this daily plan space up here where I could say like, okay, doing the keep productive presentation need to go over. Right. Like, and I can you know, tag people, things that need to get done. And then obviously I want to do this. So I'm actually going to drag it in as a reference. Sure. Uh, and the nice, nice thing about doing it this way, right, is now I can kind of collapse top priorities. I could just focus on this. I could even yeah. like open it in the sidebar right, and say like, all right, I just want to keep this up for things that need to get done today. Sure. Um, obviously we're here, so we can do that. Um, and then like, you know, whenever I want to work on this, mm -hmm. I can just click on this reference to kind of like bring it up and see, okay, what is this a part of and what other yeah. tasks related to it do I need to get done? Uh, and so like I can actually, you know, seeing this like, oh, these are already done. I just didn't check them off yet. Um, yeah. So I can clean those up. But this is like a pretty typical workflow for the day of being in Rome is, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and, and I have a question about, um, so you said you used Notion and Evernote before, but did you do task management inside of it or is this something that you've, do you have a separate app for that before? I, I did everything in Asana before, okay. but I, well, I used things for a little bit before the growth machine team got bigger, but now that the team is larger. It didn't make sense for me to have things for my tasks, Asana yeah. for the work tasks and Evernote for notes. And so 
I was doing like all of my task management, personal and growth machine in Asana, and then yeah. doing like Evernote for note management. But now I'm doing personal task management and note management in Rome, and then team management in Asana. Uh, and that's working really well for me just because I really like having these kind of robust project pages in Rome that can mm -hmm. interlink to everything else. Where right? like, here's everything I needed to get done for, um, like launching the course, right? Yeah. And I've got all of these things that need to be checked off. I have all of these like marketing things that I had planned out and, you know, tasks that I wanted to do. And like that's one that's already done. But you can see how I was kind of working through this over the last couple of weeks to make sure that it was all done. And the cool thing about, you can see some of these like tags down here hmm. is when you're on a page like this. So I could like go into the timeline bullet and then uh, I could say like, okay, show me everything that I need to do related to email. Yeah. Which is like super nice. Or show me everything I need to do related to the live writing in Rome workshop. Mm -hmm. All right, so I still need to send this follow-up email, but this is already done. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more you organize everything in Rome, the more you can kind of like tie it all together or, or like here's the email course, right? Here's all the emails I wrote. Um, and then here's all the to do's related to it. So they're all done. But if I had any open to do's, I could show them here and say like, okay, I need to get that done for the Rome course by for the email course by this day. Got you. And one final question before you mm -hmm. carry on. Um, it, it's more around uh, the sort of like ideation or like a methodology, like when you showed at the start, the, the daily plan and then the top priorities. Um, is that something you've had in the past that you've created or is that something that you made when you started the Rome account uh, to sort of prioritize your day? I've done versions of that in the past. I think it's really helpful to have, you know, a few top priorities for the day and then like mm -hmm. bonus things you can get done. So I've often had some version of that, but I just found that the, the two tier priority system worked really well for me in Rome, right? It's like, yeah. these are the things that I definitely want to get done. And uh, this week was kind of crazy with the launch, so I didn't do a good job of planning my week. But if we look at like my weekly, so what is it, 824? This is what I normally do at the start of the week yeah. is I say, you know, okay, these are sort of my top priorities that I want to get done this week. For last week, it was I need to finish recording everything. Um, and then kind of what I'll do when I start is I'll say, okay, I'm going to go over my 2020 mid-year review and I'm going to see, you know, what are the things that I wanted to focus on for the rest of this year? And then what of those should I pull into my top priorities? And then I'll go over that projects list I showed you. What of those projects should I pull into my top priorities? And then I'll go over this like thousand dollar per hour work and I'll say, you know, what is stuff that I really love doing that I'm like very good at that's thousand dollar an hour work and what stuff that I, you know, like dislike doing and want to do less of. Um, and then how does, you know, does my week and do my top priorities line up with that? And it lets me do this kind of analysis and see um, yeah. how I want to like adjust the stuff I'm working on. You know, what should I be delegating or not doing? What should I be trying to do more of? Uh, mm. It's very helpful for setting myself up for the week. That's really cool. I like that. Carry on. Sorry, Nat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, the questions are helpful. Like what else would you be curious to see me dive into more here? Yeah, I mean, um, I think you've touched on like the sort of task management side of stuff, but when it comes to like um, your own sort of notes as you go across your day, is there like, how do you collect up that sort of thoughts, ideas that you may have like sort of, do you put that inside a daily plan or is that? Um... Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff, it's a mix. So some of it will just go in here. So <clears throat> what I might say is, you know, I might pull this down here as a separate note and say, okay, we did this, right? Like check on the publish date on, you know, maybe set this task for Friday, just so that I know to like follow up with you and see like, are we publishing this Friday? Are we publishing it Monday? Like what's the plan? Sure. Because then I'll know how to promote it, right? Because I might also down here say like include in, do I have a page for this? No, medley 226, hmm. what is Monday 9-7? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm out with the so, <laughs> <laughs> This is my like, you know, this is my weekly newsletter. And what sure, I like yeah. to do is I'll tag stuff for the newsletter as the week goes on. And so if I know that you're going to have it published by like 6 p.m. ET on Monday, then I know I can include a link to it in my newsletter. Otherwise, I'll put it in 227. Um, oh, yeah. So that's one way I'm collecting things. I also do, I also collect a lot of information with uh, Readwise. 
So have you done like oh, a yeah. video or anything on Readwise before? It's on the list. Um, but on the list. Yeah, maybe okay. talk about it from scratch for someone who Yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> let me give a preview then. So what Readwise does is it lets you uh, <clears throat> automatically pull in your highlights from the things that you're reading and then automatically export them to Evernote, Notion, and Rome based on which one you use the most. Yeah. So for me, I'm pulling in highlights from uh, especially Instapaper and Hypothesis and Air, and then they're all getting saved to my Rome database. So if we go back and we look at kind of like stuff that I've saved, um, I can find an article here. Sort by last, oops. Start by last read. Uh, okay, so I had this Make Good Art um, by Neil Gaiman, which James Clear posted an article on, right? And uh, as I was reading it in Instapaper, so I can show you the source of this. As I read it in Instapaper, I was highlighting stuff that really stood out to me as being interesting. And so I read it in Instapaper. I highlighted all of this stuff that stood out to me Readwise pulls in those highlights, but then it automatically exports them to Rome. So you can see here, this is what Readwise created based on me highlighting stuff in Instapaper. Um, yeah, and I've already touched this up a little bit, but you can mm. see it, it pulls in this metadata based on uh, criteria that I set in Readwise, which I think is super cool. So uh, if we go to the Rome export, you can see, you can sort of like write some custom code down here for exactly how you want oh, stuff right. to export, which yeah. is like so cool. <laughs> it's yeah, so, I was curious about that way. That's, that's really yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, it like Readwise can tell if it's a book or an article or a tweet, and then it will yeah. add like the book, article, tweet, hashtag, whichever one it is for you. For me, almost everything yeah. I read is going to end up in a medley. So this puts it in the medley backlog, which is stuff to add to like any upcoming medley. But yeah. maybe I'll say like, okay, let's actually put this in, you know, 226, right, on Monday. Hmm. Um, and then I would also go in here and I'd add some more tags, right? Like, this would be a good career advice article. Or this yeah. would be a good, right, like art, obviously, and, you know, writing, um, like happiness, probably, like meaning of life. You know, just finding like all of these things, which are really helpful because, when I put something in my newsletter, I want to be able to pop open some of the tags and say like, what else could be related to this make good art article? Yeah. Um, maybe it's this, how will you measure your life? Or maybe it's this, uh, what you'll wish you'd known by Paul Graham. And so this lets me review other stuff in my database that's on similar themes so that mm -hmm. I can tie it together in my newsletter and create like good topic areas. So the, the inbox in Rome is super helpful because everything I'm finishing in Readwise or anything that I just like find when I'm on the go and tag with inbox, it, it all ends up here for me to process. And some of the processing is really fast, right? Like this Ruminant Wikipedia article is just one highlight. So I'm going to pull that out. I can delete this. I can add a few other tags, right? Like beef, meat, um, agriculture cows, right? Like a few of yeah. those things. And then I pretty much processed everything I need. So I'll get rid of the inbox tag. It wasn't mm -hmm. recommended by anyone. Don't need author because it's Wikipedia. And now like this page is done, right? Okay. Um, yeah, that's the important thing is, yeah, yeah. The important thing is that if I'm on like the beef page, I can see that, oh yeah, like beef is a ruminant and like this is what a ruminant is. Yeah. So kind of I like bold this so I can pull it out later. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. And, yeah. and so just like a question around like, because you come from other tools um, in the past, like how would you say your like recall and like the improvement of your productivity has gone since using the tool? Like have you seen like a massive notable improvement or is it just marginal? I would say I've seen a massive notable improvement in my like knowledge management and my ability to like quickly connect ideas and stuff from things I've read. I think that like the newsletter writing is a really good example of this. Mm. Um, and I, I did a video on this with Tiago on Friday, but uh, this was a really good example of, I read this article on, you know, the virus alters where people 
are opening their wallets. And you know, I said, okay, this is a cool article. I want to include this uh, in this medley. And so when I pulled in my notes from it, I said, well, what else might be interesting to include? Hmm. And so I you know, clicked on my COVID-19 tag and then you can see, yeah, I filtered it by also including recession. Yeah. So I said, what other things have I read related to COVID-19 and a recession? And that's what reminded me of this article by Bern Hobart from that I'd shared back in May, but I'd completely forgotten about, right? Like, I don't remember reading this article at all, but as soon as I saw it, it sparked a couple of these ideas, right? Which I was then able to pull into this newsletter as well. So it's yeah. letting me like tie together ideas across time a lot easier because there's really no analog for this type of thing in Evernote and Notion, at least as far as I've been able to use them. And it's certainly not this quick, even if there is a way to do it. So just being able to like quickly go back through everything else that I've read and find ways to connect more ideas together is really, really powerful. And it's made writing articles and newsletters much easier. And it's made finding resources for projects and things much faster. Because, mm. you know, something like if I was going to go look through all my productivity stuff, right? You know, we can see there's 48 linked references here. So it's going to be, you know, tweets, going to be projects, it's going to be like passages from books, this article that, you know, Dan from everything wrote about me, like, here's the core, there's just like so much in here that I could go through if I needed to find more productivity stuff. So Hmm. that's been really, really powerful. Um, And I think the ability to tag, you know, lines within a broader book, like the power broker is not about productivity, but Hmm. this one passage is kind of an interesting take on productivity. And you can't tag like individual lines of text in any other tool, as far as I know, or like Evernote, you can tag the note, but I would never tag the book power broker with productivity. So this passage would be kind of like lost in my like productivity and knowledge graph. Whereas in Rome, yeah. it's very easy to include it based on block level tagging, which I really, really like. Fantastic. I love the, I love the way that you set it up and everything like that. It's, um, it's really interesting. Uh, the one question, the final question I had for you was mm-hmm. around um, the theming um, and also like access on mobile devices. So yeah. the first is like CSS. Uh, do you use any like custom theme? And the second question is, like, do you use a mobile version and how so do you use it? Yeah, I I use the mobile a little bit for quick capture, right? So for just recording ideas on the go, it's pretty good for that. It's hard to search stuff on the go. It's still kind of slow and clunky. And so I just don't do it that much. Uh, I might leave myself a note to come back to it later or just add a quick to do to process something in the future. So I like the quick capture, but it's definitely not as robust of a mobile experience as you get on Evernote and Notion. But for me, I don't want to be working on my phone anyway, so I don't really mind that much. I'd rather just like, if I'm, if I need to be on my phone, I probably shouldn't be on my phone. (laughs) If that makes sense, right? It should (laughs) probably be like, I should be writing down the idea and then working on it when I'm back on my computer. I shouldn't be trying to be, super productive on my phone in most cases. So I don't mind that much. And then for the CSS, yeah, this is um, a modified version of the Leyendecker theme. And I'll send you, I've got a public URL for my modification of it that I can share with you. And I really, really like how this looks, but I just changed the font and changed some of the colors. Something that looked nicer to me, added some more spacing and things. Uh, But it's, I mean, it's night and day from what Rome (laughs) Looks like normally yeah. if we take this off, right? It's just like yeah. it it looks so much better with a little bit of theming applied to it. Yeah. Um, so that's what it looks like without it. And then if we add it back in, yeah, yeah. it's just like it's so much softer. Cleaner. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Fantastic. Um, now it's been an uh, absolute pleasure uh, having you on. And uh, I think people will be able to take away some stuff uh, about Rome, not just about how to apply it. Um, to every day, uh, but also like how to weave it into their own productivity system. So yeah. thank you. I hope so. Um, like and where where can people find you? Um, obviously, I, I wanted to point people towards the Monday medley because it's such a good email roundup. But oh, thank you. Yeah, where can people where can people find you? 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm most active on Twitter, just at Nat Eliason, uh, N-A-T-E-L-I-A-S-O-N. And my site is the same, just natalison.com. And then if you want to check out the newsletter, it's just natalison.com slash join. And that's where you can sign up. And I think that's like definitely my most consistent creative output and people seem to really enjoy it. I try to do a good job with that round of each week. So I would love to yeah. see some more people there. Yeah, I love uh, the articles you come with. I'm like, like you get them from so many different like parts of the internet. It's amazing. Uh, so every week I'm always like uh, deep inside of one article and, and learning something new. So it's uh, that's it's great. Brilliant. That's the goal. So <laughs> that is the goal. <laughs> I'd enjoy it. Lovely. Thanks for coming on, Nat, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me.